Greetings all, it's the Devious Monkey here. Okay, it's been a big week for the technology. I got my 2020 MacBook Air M1. It is the eight gig, or I mean the eight core CPU, eight core GPU version with 16 gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte SSD. I have also connected my Acasis hub to it. And right now I'm filming on my A7C with the 20 millimeter F1.8 and my Rode Wireless Go. I'm shooting in 4K, 24P, 100 megabits, simply to test this all out. Even if I were shooting at 4K, I probably wouldn't do it at 100 megabits. I think that the next step down is 60, but normally I shoot in 1080, 24, 50. That's pretty much all I need to do for whatever I want to film. I have gone back and forth on that, shooting in 1080, 4K, 1080, 4K. I've tried all the different frame rates. I've done everything. Testing to see what works best. Whilst I do like 4K, I don't do a lot of manipulation in my edits. I don't ever really zoom too far in or, or reframe stuff. Also, I feel I'm shooting for YouTube. And since most people are watching on their phones, I don't really see a need to, to do it in 4K. Now with this MacBook Air, I got the one terabyte internal drive, but I don't plan on saving anything to it. I have so many other external drives, including this Acasis, which has that one terabyte NVMe, whatever, the little chip. So I have a one terabyte drive within that, but uh, we're not talking about the Acasis hub. We're talking about editing on this MacBook Air M1. And that's why I'm shooting in 4K just so that I can get something that's gonna be a lot beefier than I'm ever gonna do. And I'm gonna put it through this Acasis hub and do my edit from there and see how it works. I'm gonna put the 4K footage in there and it's, it's either gonna just chew right through it without a hiccup, or it's going to be very obvious that I need to return this bitch and get a MacBook Pro, ha ha ha. I think I'll be fine. So that's all I wanted to do. I just wanted to shoot this and see what happens and go from there. So let's get this footage off there and edit it. <laughs> okay, I don't even know what to say. This blew through that footage. All these programs start up so much faster on this MacBook Air M1, like noticeably faster. It's, it's all like that. I plugged the Acasis drive in, it immediately recognized it. I put the SD card into it, it immediately recognized it. It was almost eye blank importing all of the footage off of the SD card through the Acasis hub into Final Cut. I put my LaCie external hard drive on here. I got another one terabyte from that that I had set up for all of my edits. It's not a solid state. It's a moving, spinny thing. And I didn't realize that. So I don't know if I'm gonna continue using that. I might go buy a Samsung T7 drive to do everything off of so that it's all solid state and it all moves like that. Anywho, so I had some, you know, like my intro and my subscribe button saved on that drive because I was going to be using that. So that immediately was recognized and pulled over right away. I scrubbed through the entire section that I filmed. I zoomed in on it, even though I said, you know, I don't do a lot of that, but I wanted to play with it. So right now you can see how I have everything like it's all wide out because I'm shooting on the on this uh, 20 millimeter instead of what would have been the equivalent of 24 millimeter with my 16 to 35. So you can see the, like the, the light right here, you can see the blue walls and, and up above the skull head. And I zoomed in on that so that that wasn't visible just to see what it looked like. And that was seamless. And I actually highlighted every field because, or every bit that I had already edited and cut so that it captured them all and did the, uh, the zooming, so, so to speak, the reframing at the same time, all and just with one slide, rather than doing them each individually. Again, trying that. This thing is like seamless. It is so fun to just sit here on this, on this little laptop editing. I don't have a problem seeing. I had to turn the brightness up because I think I have the, uh, like the auto brightness on there because it's underneath all the studio lights, it dimmed. And so I'm gonna have to shut that off because I hate that shit. I'd rather lose some battery life, but have everything bright enough that I can see it. I, I went through here, I'm able to move the timeline, you know, to where I need to go to do the edits, the cuts and the pace and, and sliding things around. I don't do much more than that. And I'm doing this all in 4K, 24 frames a second, 100 megabits, the highest that I can get on this camera 
which means it's the highest level of footage that I'll ever use for any time in, in the future. And again, I won't be shooting in 4K because I just don't do that. But it's nice to know that I can, and the footage does not hamper this computer at all. So if I go to 1080, man, this thing is just gonna fly. It's gonna be awesome. That's all I wanted to do. I just wanted to get this shot because a lot of people were asking me about it. I'm wondering why I went with an older MacBook Air M1 rather than getting a new MacBook Pro M1 Pro chip or M1X. And that's what I was gonna do originally. And now I'm glad that I didn't more than double the amount of money that I spent because I don't need to. This thing is kick ass. So monkey seal of approval, two thumbs up, hell yeah. All right, that's all I've got for you. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, leave them down below. As always, thanks for joining me. And with this computer and this whole setup, hell yeah, going forward and up.